The Bebop Kerblog of Cowboys. Cause we watched it every week, night, or at least my two guests did. But I was late to the party cause I didn't see it till I was a college boy. Cause I really suck. <laughs> I don't have my kazoo on me. I've ruined all this. Oh, no. <laughs> oh God. Oh, no. I, I, I've, I've saved all your eardrums. The kazoo. Oh. <laughs> How can I live? If only. <laughs> Uh, welcome, Adam April has hit the halfway point. Check out, shake out those lips um, already. Now this is going to be coming out on the fifteenth Saturday. I'm joined by Mike and Steve again. Is that the pun, Anna April? Yeah, we did this last year. I thought it was called something else. No, it was Anna April. Anna May. Anna May April. Uh, no, well, because I had May Revol, which was did not go over as well. Somebody needs to help you with your puns. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> clearly. You're making it too difficult. Mar- Martin, help, Martin, help me out. I'm not doing Mayorville again, but anime, I, I had enough to fill another month again. But um, which well, speaking well, of, after this year, you could probably do a month's worth of Mayorville. Maybe, maybe, maybe twenty eight. Mayorville if, sounds if like an online game you play. For Ma- free. Mayorville, you get the mayor. <laughs> run your own town, like, like Toontown. It's no, it's a Powerpuff Girls spinoff. Yeah, the mayor. Um, so I, I guess this is a uh, this is this this is one that seems so like. Obvious, why the fuck haven't you done a Curb blog about the show yet, Curb? And yet, I don't think I've ever been asked to do one of, like, you know, all the other flavor of the month. Or, like, oh, this second coming of Christ, the anime. Do Kill Kill. Do One Punch Man. Do whatever. But I don't think I've ever been asked to do Bebop. But I figured this year was a good one, and I want to have these two on again. Because we did, what we did, we did Yu Yu Hakusho Show and One Piece last year. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm going to have them back on for another one again. Um, so, and, and I think actually similar to when we did the One Piece one, uh, I'm going to have you guys start off because as I implied with the song, I did not grow up with Bebop during its golden years on Adult Swim in the early 2000s. Uh, mm-hmm. I was, I think about... Or the late 2000s. Because <laughs> was it? It was on Adult Swim for a very well, long Yeah, I mean, time. running that long and repeat, certainly, mm-hmm. but, but like when it was like, like making a huge splash, I didn't see it until I think like close to 10 years later. Uh, after it was running on TV, um, so to start with, you, I, I don't. I, I, I'm curious as to why you never watched it. Well, it was weird. Like, so my relationship with <laughs> my relationship with Adult Swim was weird because uh, I know I've told this story many, many times. But my first time actually seeing Adult Swim was when this one and I years ago went to like a beach house in Jersey for like a vacation thing, and I had heard about Fully Cooley. And I, I don't even know if I, like, knew about Bebop or Trigun yet, or which were the other two. Like, whoa, holy shit, you got to see these shows, anime. But we stayed up and we saw Fully Cooley, and that was my also my introduction to Futurama and Family Guy for the first time, which is seeing them So this that, must at, at least be 2000... Was it 2004? I'm trying what? to think when Fully Cooley first aired. Uh, Fully Cooley was 03. Oh, it was 03. Was it 03? Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I remember, because that was when, like, Teen Titans and Mega Man and T-Warrior were, like, new-ish. Because mm-hmm. uh, we were watching every Saturday morning and night cartoon, so there already wasn't. Yeah, there already wasn't a Saturday Night Adult Swim anymore. So no, so yeah, so it was on weekdays. Fully Coolie was like I think that second wave of like new anime stuff they had on there. Yeah, that's right yeah. because it was with Lupin and all that stuff. So uh, actually, because I don't even remember, or if, I don't know if you do. When we when we were staying up to watch Fully Coolie, like had you seen? I think you'd seen, like, Futurama and Family Guy years before yeah. that already. But had you seen, like, Cowboy Bebop and Trigon and all that, and all that stuff at the time? Uh, I'm pretty sure I had. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure if I'd seen all of them at that point, but I definitely knew what they were. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure, like, when I first watched Bebop. It might have just, like, been around the same time when, like, Yu Yu Hakusho was on Zelda Swim. Yeah. Because that, yeah, that, I mean, that was just, like, that kind of stint of, like, early 2000s where, like... Okay, Pokemon Dragon Ball like caught, like blew the the anime nuke that overtook all of the world, and now like okay, now we're gonna watch other things and see all these other shows that are popping up yeah, everywhere. It's just like one of those weird shows that like I would occasionally see if I stayed up late. Mm-hmm. Like, like I always bring up as, as a joke, like Rain the Conqueror and <laughs> stuff. Was that from that era? I think yeah, that was around the same the, time. It was God. the weeknight era. Uh, I guess I predate that. I can't remember if it was around Thanksgiving or Christmas. Uh, because normally I wouldn't stay up late because yeah. of school. Um, I know it was a holiday break. Uh, and I caught Adult Swim. It was, I think it was a Thursday night. Because uh, they, what they used to do was uh, Sundays and Thursdays. Sundays yep. were all new episodes. And Thursdays was just a 
repeat of that Sunday block. Yep. Uh, I think it must have been around Christmas time. Uh, and I, the and the thing is, Adult Swim at the time was all comedy shows except for Bebop. Yeah, Bebop. Yeah. I think. Uh, no, I don't, I don't. I'm not sure if it was at the end of the block. I'm not going to do the research. I'm too lazy. Well, but, uh, but was but, Bebop the like? Was that the first like Adult Swim like new anime that they had? Like, yes. was so yeah. it was even before it was like, the Trigun. only. It was the only anime they had. Wow, Trigun. They didn't get till. I think they started doing week weeknights. Wow. I mean, Trigon was already a thing at that point, but it wasn't on TV yet. Yeah, well, I mean, because I think I just associate... I, Trigon's another one that I actually still haven't seen in full all these years later, but uh, I just always associate, like, Bebop and Trigon, like, like back-to-back all yeah, the time with each other. a very similar feel to them. Yeah, and, and even, like, Arsenal. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, the Arsenal, the animation. Mm-hmm. Like, it has that really, like, gritty 90s anime. Trigon's a little more goofy yeah. than, than yeah, Bebop. I mean, it's definitely, you should definitely check out the track. Yeah. It's pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm, ne- I'm, next I'm, year I'll say. I'll, I'm, I'll do that. Like, I've said this before, I'm sure, too, but yeah. I'm really holding out for them to do like a like a Brotherhood Trigon thing like what they did with that domain. Yeah, well, how, did that movie do okay? I have no idea. Yeah. I like the movie. It was pretty good. I, I never that, saw it. That followed, I think, the comic storyline. And not the anime. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe like half and half. Like, oh, okay. I'm not entirely sure. The stands alone. Was, yeah. Like, I would love to see that too because that would be a good like new entry. They probably call it like Trigun Maximum since the comic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Um. So I also wanted. Oh, to sure. This was sure. circa two thousand one. So oh, so like right when it started. Yes. Oh my well, God. Heavy Metal Queen was the first episode I ever saw, and I don't know which number that is. I could. The, uh, the, that's the like, Blu-ray box is too far for me. Yeah. To check. <laughs> Do you want me to get it? Uh, sure. No. Okay. <laughs> You'll hit the well microphone. Fine. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, that was, the, that was the first one I saw. So they must have started around November because okay. this is like in December. So that episode's a little ways in. Yeah. I think that's like in the second half, I believe. Mm, maybe? I think it's within the first 10 episodes. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Cause I, Ed's not introduced yet, but Faye's in there. That's right. That's right. That's um, right. <laughs> that, yeah, that was the first episode I ever saw. Okay. And uh, that was, and that kind of really set the tone for the show real quick, because it was about bounty hunters and all that. Yeah. And got all yeah, that yeah. across space and mm-hmm. all the travel and all that. It's a good one. It, it was, it, it's not one of my favorite episodes, but it's a, it, it kind of just presented, like, for the most part, what it was in a nutshell. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I mean, that, that's the nice thing is, like, Bebop is one of those... One of those, like, rare anime, I think, that, like, you can just kind of walk in on a random episode, and then, like, you're probably likely to get a good kind of feel for what the hell's going on It's episodic, you know? It's, yeah. You can't say that about a lot of series. Even a lot of, you know, shows that are the same runtime, like 26 episodes. Yeah. I, I think, uh... Well, usually usually because they're more arc-based. Like, something like Kill a Kill is kind of an, an ongoing story... Uh, I wouldn't say it's episodic. I don't, sorry to make comparisons. It's the first show to come to my head that's also 26 mm-hmm. episodes. Uh, so, and Bebop, despite it having its ongoing storylines that sometimes it'll jump back into halfway through the series, like in uh, Jupiter Jazz. Yeah, uh, which I want to get to that, kind of those elements mm-hmm. of it. But, uh, but on, on that same note, Mike, do you remember the first episode you saw? No idea. Damn. Like, honestly, I can't, I don't even know, if, like, for sure, if, like, when I saw it the first time is when I saw it the first time. Yeah. So, like, I can't imagine, like, not knowing Spike. Yeah, mm-hmm. you just just always been there yeah, like, <laughs> in your mind. I can't remember a time before knowing. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens with a lot of Two, stuff. 2001 BS before Spike. No. Um, actually, so when I was doing a mild amount of research, basically bef- this last week or so, I, I went back and rewatched like good like ten episodes. Like I I put out a little tweet of like, hey, what's what were like the best episodes or whatever. So I watched all those and a bunch of other ones that I was interested in seeing, and I, and I rewatched the movie as well, which I'll get to that. Um, but it, it, yeah, it's, 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 uh, oh, when, when I was doing a little bit of research, I saw that, so it aired in Japan in 98 and apparently it aired like, I think like, like less than 13, like random episodes, like out of order on some other channel. And then I guess, some, I don't know if it was like because of something specific or whatever, but because it was so violent, they took it off the network it was on. Hmm. And then, like, I think later that year, it got on a different network, and then they just aired all 26 in a row, like, properly, um, which I didn't even realize. So, like, there were a bunch of episodes. I think, I think actually, I think Stray Dog Strut, like, was the first one that aired ever in Japan, like, yeah. even, even before the actual episode one. So, it was, like, a Teen Titans situation where they were, like, airing them out of order, depending on the channel they were on or whatever. It's funny. 
Um, Japan doesn't give a shit yeah, about this show. I have no idea. Japan does not care. Really? Much about the, well, as far as I know, it's they they don't really see. See, it's actually a good segue. Like Bebop seems to be, and, and there's a very, very, very small. Like I mean, Full Metal. You were kind of joking about Brotherhood before. Full Metal is like one that I think of in this this kind of handful of shows that seem to do infinitely better in the U.S. than they do in Japan, which Japan. seems well at. Yeah. at, at at this moment of recording, a new trailer just came out for the Japanese live action movie of Full Metal. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's true. That's true. And and it's not us making. We, we didn't beat them to the punch somehow to fuck that one up. Uh, but, well, we'll see what happens with it. Yeah. Mart, Martin thinks it looks like a, a student film. Well, if, oh, if, talk, if, if <laughs> with Shin Godzilla, their CGI is not on par with Hollywood's. Yeah. Yeah. We just saw Power Rangers. I would, I would say that. Feels like a well-made student film. Yeah, yeah. well, mm. just the way it's handled and a lot of visuals. Uh, trust. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get we'll get we'll get into a discussion about live action. Sorry, yes, adaptation. that'll that'll Later. also be next year. Um, well, yeah, considering that, uh, that, that Bebop movie still hasn't happened yet, Keanu or whoever was going to get on that. Um, but Bebop seems like of that small handful of shows that are like that. Um, there, it's like the king of. This is a show that people who not only are not into anime, but people who dislike anime will watch and be like, this is awesome and I still like this and appreciate it for what it is. Well, it's, it's uh, Bebop's one of those shows that's just between, you know, cultures. You know? Yeah. It's made in Japan, but it has such a Western feel. And it not it, just because it's like Western doesn't necessarily mean like it'll succeed over here mm-hmm. because uh, there's a lot of shows that are you know, like, Western-based, hell, hell, that even take place here, that aren't successful. Yeah. But I think Bebop, it just has a lot going for it. Mm-hmm. It's it's so many different blends of uh, genres. You know, it's episodic. It could do that. But mm-hmm. it's it's sci-fi, futuristic... I don't even know. It's not cyberpunk, and it's not... And it's no, not it's, steampunk. It's, it's, like, it's like future retro, it's like as I jokingly call the technology. Future retro. Like, I compare it to, like, the old Star Wars films, where it's like, hey, it's the future, we have space travel, but everything's a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like... It's, no, because even we... We fucking CRTs for everything. Yeah. We literally just watched Stray Dogs Store, like, right before we started recording, and there's a kid with a watch. With a, just a watch. Yeah. And I'm just oh, like... I'm glad oh. I'm not the only one that picked up on that. <laughs> it's like... Oh, okay. It's, it, it's all the clunkiness of 80s and 90s technology. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, just... Like, I, I just watched through, like, all of it in the last two days, and, uh, it, like, in one of the episodes with, like, Faye's past, like, she, she wakes up and doesn't, like, recognize the technology around mm-hmm. her. And, like, they mentioned, like, I think she's from, like, 2022. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. like, the guy at comments, like, oh, from your time, in your time, you knew cell phones had antennas. Like, <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> I mean, I love that one because of also just like the like Betamax VHS conversation and like. Well, that's the second one. This the, is the first one. Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, I, I think you gotta you gotta go back to what anime was. Well, it, definitely depending on your age group, but for kids, kids knew at that time it was Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z, all the Saturday and morning stuff, yeah, and Tsunami, yeah. and older people they knew like Ava and. Like Akira, Dirty Pants, <laughs> like <laughs> this. Akira's got kind of like the same future tech. Where it's yeah, all crappy. Mm-hmm. Is that? Oh yeah, that is the future. No, it. Yeah, it's like the post-apocalyptic Neo Tokyo, but thing. very sci-fi, yeah. edgy, body horror, nudity. And all that. <laughs> uh, it Bebop just it it it's definitely like a bridge between you know two cultures. Yeah, uh, and it and it. And it creates its own. It has. It will has its own identity. Yeah. And its technology and its sci fi ness and uh, it just it people are able to resonate with it. It's it's an easy series for people to relate to. Yeah. It's it's not so bizarre. Mm. Um, and it's kind of crazy that it was the only anime airing on the Adult Swim block at the time. It really stood on its own and it really had to like carry that torch you know it's the only anime on there it's like well it has to prove itself like yeah there has to be a reason why this is airing amongst c-lab 2021 and aqua <laughs> and space goes coast to coast the early days of those yes yeah. that's crazy See, i didn't know that i didn't know that because i again i keep thinking of like i keep associating it with all the other shows that were on at the time because mm-hmm. even i remember like when i was starting to watch um yu haka show on saturdays like, right when it started, that was also, like, early 2000s, and um, that was another, like, reason that I wanted to get into watching Adult Swim, 
But, like, for some reason, for, like, ever, it felt, I just kept missing Bebop. Uh, the one episode that I saw was Mushroom Samba, which is on my little list that I'm going to get to in a sec. Um, I wonder if, it, I, are, it, does everyone have, like, the one episode they would always catch on TV randomly? Um, Mine would usually be Jupiter Jazz Part 2. I, you know what, <laughs> I, I want to say maybe, I want to say... even the one with the boobies. <laughs> no. And I, it's like how, like, like, with Spongebob, it was always the Mrs. Puff Goes to Prison yeah, episode I yeah, always yeah, caught yeah, on yeah. TV. Bebop, it was always Jupiter Jazz. I, I want to say I did maybe catch Mushroom Samba twice, but I, I could be totally up. I just, but I remember that was the first episode that I saw. Uh, mm-hmm. And I did like it, but for some reason I still didn't like... You know, maybe just because, like, I didn't think to... I was so busy. It was back when I collected a lot of stuff, and I didn't think to, like, go collect, like, the individual DVDs of that. I, was, I, I kept, like... Just putting it off for some reason because it wasn't. It's until, a good thing you didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but the, the the first thing I I saw in full, and I think that it either, it might have even been that same year that you were kind of like in the process of moving back to New York or whatever. Um, that we watched the movie on Adult Swim, I think on a on a Saturday night. Oh, they did play it. Yeah, yeah. And I and I watched all that, and I I only knew Mushroom Samba. I very that, that was my entire experience with the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I saw the movie, and I really really liked the movie a lot. Uh, but but even then, like then I, that was before we were in college, and then I didn't finally fucking sit down. And we we were talking before we had a, we had a library at uh, School of Visual Arts that actually had like a pretty big anime selection, like. Like impressively so, mm-hmm. and uh, I found was okay. It's it's time. I'm in my last year of college. I should fucking see this show already because I've been into catch up with the rest of humanity. So I rented it, marathon the whole thing, watched the movie again. Really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, and this was this last week or so. This was the first time I'd seen any of those episodes again. In you know since 2011. Mm-hmm. So it had been a long time. And uh, and even for you guys too, because how long ago? Uh, well, the Blu-rays it? came out. At the end of 2014, okay. I think so, like two years ago was when okay. I watched through the whole series. Yeah, um, Funimation, of course, has the whole show on uh, on their streaming service. I think for free, if I'm not mistaken. Possibly. Yeah. I know it's on Hulu, but I think it's only subbed on Hulu. Oh, okay. Crunchyroll, it's subbed. Uh, I wonder how many people have seen Cowboy Bebop in Japanese at all. I haven't. <laughs> I really don't care to. It's so strange. I think I talked about that with you, Hakusho, last year. Uh, with you, Hakusho, I kind of at least, you know, I get curious and I'll yeah. watch clips. But Bebop, it's just, I don't know, it, it, the English language really suits it. Yeah. You know? It's, well, it's crazy and too. Nothing, even, nothing against the Japanese actors or the Japanese version. No, because I'm sure it has, like, I, I just was kind of peeking at the credits at the end of one of the episodes. And I was like, because, like, Beerus is, uh, is Spike. Um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, o- old Joseph from JoJo and the new guy who does, uh, Mr. Satan is, um, is Jet. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 So it's, I'm right. sure it has like all like the, like great, like work and Oh, and fucking Vicious is Cell. Yeah. And yeah he's Norio Wakamoto. Yeah, which is Which hilarious. is probably the only reason why I'd watch the Japanese version because <laughs> I fucking Ooh. love Norio Wakamoto. Um, Son Goku, that old fucking classic every oh, you never 90s watched, film. You never watched sounds. Bacchano. Oh, is I, he in that? Uh, my go-to... Uh, Nori Wakamoto on his Kiru. <laughs> uh, My favorite is uh, the uh, Scryed, uh never doing a curb on that, by the way. Uh, the, uh, so the, that, would the, be, uh, that would be for, for anime April yeah. <laughs> fools. No. Um, I think you and I are the only people who like, ever saw that show. No, I watched that show. <laughs> well, well, no, I, I want to go back to their, um, the beginning of the discussion. Oh, I, yeah, just, yeah. I find it really funny that you didn't watch Bebop because back then, if you were an anime, you watched everything, everything yeah. and anything that was on yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. It, even if you wound up not liking it, you gave it a shot. Yeah. That's how, that is how like a lot of kids were because we just, we grew up with so much stuff, like, like just a huge influx of things being on television. Yeah. We just, we, we, like, I would wake up and just watch Rocket Power. <laughs> I couldn't stand Rocket Power. <laughs> it was just on. But I'm up at seven yeah, in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't care for sports, but the, the crappy extreme sports cartoon. You know, I don't, I don't know what it was. Though. I could have read. Cause, no, because <laughs> you, you're totally right. I, it was it was totally like that. But for some reason, like... And it wasn't the only show that I, I kind of... Because like, even like Outlaw Star, which I had less excuse because that was on Toonami or like yeah. Gundam Wing. I didn't watch a lot of those. 
There were just some that completely passed me by because I just like yeah I, I wasn't like t- totally interested for some reason. But that blows my mind. I, I yeah no, no but that totally makes sense to be weirded out. Yeah I don't know but but Bebop was like that was a particular show because for all those years all through college all through high school I was hearing from everybody like it's one of the best things you could ever see like you got to fucking experience this uh, and still like well, to this at, day well like, after watching it what why do you think that is. Well, you know, well, because I, I, I'm posing that question too. Um, to, I, let's ask you a question with another. I was not even a question. Uh, but well, what I did was I. So I, I again, I put out a little call to everybody and was like, "What were the best episodes?" And because this is again, it's a show where like you can just watch random ones and you can still get like what the hell's going on. You don't necessarily have to follow a whole lot of the Unless plot. It's or Super whatever. Jazz Part Two. Well, yeah, or you'll be or you'll Real Folk Blues. I don't know why Jupiter like Jazz was two parts. Didn't really need to be. No, maybe the, maybe that was like the mid season finale. Might have that been. is kind of like the middle. Was it? Yeah, I, I almost want to go look at the numbers because I, I bet you if it was a two part and it was like earlier, it was probably because of that. Mm-hmm. But um, so uh, the number of, uh, so I had the top five and I did a little voting thing. Uh, so funnily enough, number five was uh, both parts of the final episode was Real Folk Blues. Um, which I just watched. Uh, I watched the, the morning that we were before we did this. I watched those two and the movie again in a row. Um, part one was kind of making me doze a little bit because uh, I was just kind of like not super into it the whole time. And then part two, I was like super into like from start to finish. Uh, great way to end it. Um, ironically, as it's the first one on this list. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because um, to kind of also go to your question too. One of the things that I think uh, is such a strong suit for this, even though it's not something that one would probably associate with the show, it has such a good sense of humor, and it goes so well with the fact that, like, it's just, like, it's an adventure kind of, like, romp-around story, like, the, from episode to episode. Um, Real Folk Blues was among, you know, those two parts are among the more kind of, like, serious episodes. Um, generally, anything involving Vicious. <laughs> Um, and, uh, Vicious, I don't, I don't know, I don't know entirely how I feel about him as a character, he, cause he, he seems like the most anime, with big quotation marks, well, thing he, about the show. He's Shadow the Spiegel. <laughs> he's not there long enough to mm-hmm. care about him. Yeah. Like, same with, uh, with Knives in the Trigun anime. Mm-hmm. Like, they're both there for about the same amount of screen time, mm-hmm. and you don't really get to know them at they're just cool, and then they fight, and then they go away. Yeah. And that's, yeah. It, <laughs> Spike's backstory is really the, the most uninteresting part of all of Bebop. It's still good, but it's not like it's not what defines the series at all. Well, it seems like what what kind of helps to have Spike define it is just that like he's such a like entertaining like kind of everyman protagonist. He's not too boring he's not too cool he's not too goofy or whatever he's just like kind of that right middle ground of like Mm -hmm. interesting and he works and like he's and he's identifiable like he's not too like oh i would never do that i i think i could speak as one of the many people that probably really wanted to be like spike spiegel when they were younger (laughs) yeah uh i mean well because he's and also like he's just and even design wise like he's super fucking iconic um but yeah i mean i think i think real folk blue is kind of like and the movie, I think, both kind of got across, like, what his deal was the most in terms of just, like, what is he doing with himself? The one thing that I didn't really get, even, like, in watching all these again, was I didn't get what the deal with, like, the, I feel like I'm dreaming, I feel like this isn't real, I feel like I'm, this is all, like, in my head kind of thing. I wasn't entirely clear on, like, what the deal with that was supposed to be. I think it might have been because he just didn't have closure. Unlike with Julia. Which is everything, because yeah. he ran away from it all. I never really thought about too much until, you know, you bring it up just now, but I think it's because he kind of ran away from it, pretty much created, like, a new life, a new identity. Mm-hmm. So, it almost like, it was like, that was all a dream, you yeah. know, he went back to, you know, face his mortality. Such an obvious thing about uh, the show that I forgot in, in rewatching it again was, because whenever I think of Yoko Kano's music, I always think of, like, the the BGM stuff, like just the pure music. 
but I forgot how many, like, songs are in Bebop, just as background. Not mm-hmm. even just as background music, practically as, like, little, like, mini music videos. Mm-hmm. Usually of people running away or in, in like, ships chasing other characters yeah. or something while a song plays and everybody just looking really, like, pissed off about, God damn it, I gotta go get this thing that I need to pay my bills and eat something that's not ramen or shiitake mushroom every night. <laughs> I think, I, I think Bebop really represents the... The the Han Solo mm-hmm. side of Star Wars. Yeah, it's you know gritty, messy. Not you know lots of gray. Not necessarily black and white. Good life and sucks for these types of people. <laughs> you know, it's just like it, life's a drag. Yeah, uh, and then I think people really identify with that. It's it just has all these aspects of things people liked in movies, like yeah. stuff like Star Wars, surely like Blade Runner and other things, and it just. And it still had its own identity. Like, honestly, I don't ever really get the sense of, like, oh, it's ripping off of Star Wars right here. Maybe Stargate? <laughs> Though I've never really seen Stargate, so I can't really say. I mean, because oh, also, you, you make me think, because every episode and in, in how they were very individualized, they all kind of felt like little mini-movies. Like, they pack, they pack so much mm-hmm. in 22 minutes with each of these, it's, like, scary. Um... Which I think that also might have been something with, like... Because also for, like, you know, with adults in particular who are, like, film buffs, like... Um, that just, like... Especially how a lot of them seemed like all these kind of... Okay, this is the... Like, like this is the one that's kind of like this genre of movie. And then this one that's mm-hmm. more like the, the traditional kind of, like, space adventure type shit. And it had so much, like, range. And also a lot of that's on the directors, too. Because, you know, tonally a lot of episodes are different. Like, Black Dog Serenade is... Almost kind of looks like an episode of Big O. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the way they have some of those scenes and with the lighting, uh, it's it, it, yeah, it reminds me like with One Piece because One Piece can really like juggle a bunch of genres and it fits like Bebop is one and the same. I feel like One Piece is always still like Shonen at heart, oh, even course. despite yeah. all that. Bebop, see, like because like. There's so many, like, this is a funny episode, this is a creepy episode, this is a, like, serious, like, dramatic episode or whatever. Like, Riffle Blues is mostly serious, uh, yeah. both parts of that. Um, but, uh, which, and that that was just, like, the one that... Well, the, it, the funny thing, the whole symbol of the, you know, despite them not being in the show right away, like, when Ed leaves the crew, that's mm-hmm. the end of the innocence and the... And the humorous side of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, Real Folk Blues, I don't think there's a single funny moment nope. in there. No. Nope. Um, and the characters are, they're they're really strong in the show. Well, then again, this is kind of more of like a, it's a, it's a sci-fi futuristic version of Lupin the Third. Oh. Because, uh. Well, because Thieves and. Because even when I, 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 I think, well, I, no, I didn't know what Lupin was before, uh. Bebop, or maybe I did. Uh, it pretty much was around the same time, but I, I saw right away. I'm like, oh, these are these are Loop on the Third and his crew, except for Goemon that kind of yeah goes somewhere else. But it's very uh, of that. You know, it's almost like very similar. You know, bounty hunters, thieves. It kind of almost goes yeah, hand in hand. So to make the, uh, the character uh, comparisons like Spikes, Loop on mm-hmm. uh, Jets, Jigen, mm-hmm. uh, Faye, would you guess would be. Fujiko. Uh, Fujiko by default, and someone was saying that Vicious is kind of like going on design. If you were, you know, if so you were, easy. Yeah. <laughs> similar <laughs> hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you draw that, Steve? <laughs> yeah, Here's the guy. Next con, put it on a T-shirt. Um, I don't want to be that. Guy. Or a cereal box. Uh, do you guys? Uh, well, do you guys well, let me tell. I'll tell a T-shirt story later. Just uh, remind me. Uh, what, do you guys remember like when you saw? Like, did you see the finale of the show? Like last like after you've seen a lot of them or was there a lot that you hadn't seen before i think i saw it on tv okay i did see it on tv and i definitely want to talk about the ending uh too uh i i didn't see every episode you know because you would some saturday night just catch home, whatever you have in you know? yeah. yeah and kind of you know it was bebop was a good show with that because uh you know it didn't matter but i remember seeing the ending and man that got me that ending. yeah uh it's just like it, it is a total bummer, and I've said that before. Yeah, but I like it because I think it it makes sense. It feels right for it. I, cause sometimes things can always wrap up nicely in a nice little package. Yeah, because then it doesn't really resonate with you. 
the ending definitely stuck with me. Like, the stuff that you think about, like, a day or two days after you see it, that's when you know, like, you have, like, a satisfying ending, even if it's tragic. Yeah. I... Because I really wanted Spike to be... I, I, can we talk spoilers? Of course, yeah. Spike, yeah. Spike's dead. Yeah. <laughs> He's dead. He died. Again, Bang. Because <laughs> I, I, I was like, oh, maybe they'll do a sequel and he's yeah. back. Well, I think yeah. if... I thought, like, if they were going to do another Bebop series, because Bebop was really popular, and I'm like, oh, do a prequel, do a prequel. But then I realized, I'm like, oh, that's stupid. Yeah. Bebop doesn't need a prequel yeah. when it just... Because you, you don't necessarily need things to be told to you like so like stretched out so painfully obvious like we, bebop we, tells backstories throughout the the present yeah like we get enough story. of it like kind of scattered yeah. throughout and just kind of interactions with people and that's a much more interesting way of storytelling it's yeah. like i hate just like here's the beginning like telling it in chronological order it's like tarantino movies freaking confuse you with how yeah. things play out it's creative and it's engaging. It kind of keeps you on your toes watching. For sure. Uh, but no, that uh, ending... Because, yeah, as I was saying before, like, the the, uh, the the childlike innocence, you know, that, you know, that symbolically came to an end would end when Ed left mm-hmm. and Ed and I left the crew. Uh, and just, yeah, it just <laughs> it sucked all that... Uh, the, the soul out of that's so all that was left was just... You know, it's like the mature, tragic ending yeah. that it is. Right, depending, you know, it's not. It might not necessarily be a tragic ending, but I honestly feel like the characters really got left alone. I mean, well, Spike died. Faye had nowhere to go to because she got her memories back. Did and, she? Did she stay on the ship with Jed, or did they separate? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you don't know. I was gonna say it's a thing. It's all wrapped up except for Jet and Faye. Yeah. Know, who the fuck knows what they did? Yeah. Because I feel really bad because Jet and Faye are kind of, they really have no one else. Yeah. Jet, you know. Maybe they got married. His, his, <laughs> they you know, say it, like, probably the saddest parts when he's, like, walking away from Faye. She's just, like, weeping. Yeah. yeah. It's. Cause I, I think because that was when you realized, like, oh, God, even though we're all, like, miserable and have, like, fucking problems, like, this is the family, is the four of them, like, Mm -hmm. and it's like, you're watching it fall apart by the end of it. Yeah. Um, actually, what's kind of interesting, too, in, so, the, the movie came out in 2001 in Japan, and I think that we got it, like, shortly after the show was done in the U.S. Oh, yeah. So, um... And and seeing that and knowing that it because I think it chronologically takes place that they say between like episode twenty two and twenty three because it's obviously when all of them are still together. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that uh, seeing that and and some of the conversations that Spike has with like Elektra and like some of his like kind of semi attachments like Vincent like getting what he what his deal is about and you get some of those again those kind of vague conversations and you, and by that point you if you've seen the series you know what his deal is. But you put it in that perspective, which I didn't think to, because the first time we saw, I didn't know any backstory about any of them. I just I was just seeing this adventure. Um, but but seeing that now and like knowing a little bit more about what his deal is, I think was kind of cool about what they did with that. And that it's not so much okay, here's a sequel or a prequel or whatever, but here's just like something a little bit further to what further you know, adventures. Yeah and, and and yeah, and also like like by that point you have a firmer understanding of specifically I think of Spike because like the other ones I think by that point are a little more clear mm-hmm. um, but uh, I did like that and I, I think I, and also like Bang is fucking famous it's iconic yeah. now <laughs> it's well, like, and, and, and that's another, how Tsunami ended for a while another uh, another crazy thing about the the ending to Bebop is it ra- it raised my standards mm-hmm. too high in terms of what I thought anime endings were like. Yeah. Because I think at that point, that was the first series I ever saw end. Yeah. Because I think at that point, DBZ still hadn't completed yet. Oh, like any best. show? E- yes. Wow. Um, any anime... Well, anime... For maybe, like, yeah, and shows in general, because most American stuff just gets canceled. Yeah. So. Um, and I, it almost, like, it felt cinematic. Well, we, at least the... This has changed, of course, on the Blu-rays and falls more the Japanese. But on US TV, the credits were, you know, they they were a scroll. They weren't a they were you know fade in, fade out yeah. like most TV credits are. Is it not like that on the Blu-ray? No, really. Um, no, it's like that on the DVD. Yeah, it's like that on the original DVDs. Why would they, that's like a huge. Part of well, because the Japanese version isn't like that. Really? It's yeah. 
That, that's such a good way. To I I I know. I prefer it that way because it feels cinematic. Uh, oh, what the, the like credits trailing moving up. credits moving up? And, and uh, it works with like the way it ends. It's like you're trailing off. Exactly. Like, yeah. I yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of it either. But I realize they probably just followed the Japanese version. But it makes it feel a little more TV movie esque. Yeah. Hmm. But my whole point was it felt so cinematic and it has you know it doesn't play you know real folk blues. It doesn't play like the song it has like a yeah because you know, they play because they play that song earlier in the episodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> almost like yeah, well, they, the episode's called. Real. Yeah, and but no, it's funny because it, it almost that that came off to me like oh it's like the show knows that it's ending and it's preemptively playing mm-hmm. the fucking ending credits song <laughs> and I just I thought it was so cinematic I'm like wow what an ending and yeah. I realized I'm like oh shows don't really end like that no nope. then again like DBZ went into GT so of course it didn't have like a kind of an ending GT kind of had more of that so I was so underwhelmed when Z just ends and then the same old credits roll I'm like. What the hell? Where's the cinematic? You know, where's yeah. a new song and all that? Bebop yeah. really raised my standards. Not a lot of shows. Well, I don't know. Maybe a lot of shows do do that. They, mm-hmm. I just don't see them. But yeah. I, I don't see that too often. Well, JoJo does that. I yeah. realize now when a season ends, they kind of have more of a cinematic, you know, credits roll. Um, it's man, like and even as like a, it's like as a kid, like it, like I knew it bummed me out. And I knew it was sad. But like I said, it stuck with me. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, for sure. And it's not like it, like it completely. Like, oh man, like it didn't like depress me or like to a point of like. But it's, pa- it's my powerful. Own life. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. it's powerful, and it's different from like you know, yeah. especially at that point, like what you had seen in terms of animation. Because like, what the oh. what the hell do you learn if Julia survived and uh, her and Spike just run went off, together? off, and it's like, oh, I guess that's. Like, what, well, what do you learn yeah, from that? Where, 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 Write what is, fan what is, fiction. What, about. Is, what does Spike learn <laughs> from that? Well, his bit also about, like, because, no, I'm, I'm not going off to die. I'm going off to figure out if I'm alive. Yeah. And the fact that he looks so, like, complacent. Like, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. Also, bang. Um, it's, sad, it's, it, it's sad, yeah, because most of those main characters, they have, at the end, they, throughout the whole, uh, you know, by the end of the series, they really have nothing. Like, what yeah. are they living for? They don't have any goals. They don't have anyone they know or love. Yeah. It's... It's it's tragic. It's lonely. Well, yeah. re- rewinding to the the happier stuff. Although this one is actually one of the more creepy episodes. Um, I think this is also one of your suggestions. Not one of my personal favorites, but uh, in uh, the number four slot was Toys in the Attic. Everyone remembers Toys in the Attic. Yeah, I thought uh, the one time I think it was, it was my brother. Like his his description to me was that, that they died at the end, <laughs> which is kind of at this point it's kind of like it's almost like a you know and. And of course, uh, totally related to the show, but it's like like a space dandy ending. Like, oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Say, yeah, yeah, it just resets. But of course, they don't die. And then Ed just eats attention. it, and suddenly that yeah. fixes everything. I like. Uh, I made a joke about that at the studio I'm currently at because I think there was something molding in the fridge, and I just <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, we got some toys in the attic shit here, and I was and I. It just made me smile that one of my coworkers knew exactly what I was talking about. Because <laughs> I forgot the name of the crab, whatever the hell, the, no, the rock lobster, whatever the hell it is. Like, I forgot the name of that when I was able to say Toys in the Attic, and immediately someone's like, yeah, yeah I, I totally get what you're saying. Oh, you, hold, you hold the bro fist mm-hmm. out, it's like, yeah, anime. I think, that, I think that was the episode they played on Halloween, which is weird because you think they would play the other one, the Pierre Lefou. Episode or the movie because the movie takes place on the movie's also like or the Cowboy Andy because that's a costume for it. Oh my mm-hmm. god, I have uh, uh, that's probably I'm sad that one's not on the list. <laughs> oh, it's not on your list. Oh, no. Okay, so let's talk about it. Then. <laughs> uh, Wait, first, I gotta say that son of a gun, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I want to get into the, the I want to get into the other ones that were not on the list voted. Like when we get to up to number one, because I want to give shout outs to certain other ones that I personally. Well, liked. This one will be an honorable mention. Let's talk about it now while it's on my Fine, okay, fine. I, Cowboy Andy's amazing, and I love that. I love that episode. It's gotten so much better with age. Uh, I think I think one of the reasons why I look back fondly on it, because back in the day, VCRs, you know, VCRs, yeah. children. Maybe you. When I used to tape, like, a block of Adult Swim, you know, because I'm still a kid, I, it, I'd be lucky if I stayed up past, you know, 12. Yeah. So I would just record, and I remember I went on vacation, we drove down to Orlando, and I had like this shitty little VCR with a tiny TV to watch tapes, and I brought my tape that had uh, one of, I think the first or second Maze Castle episodes of Yu Hakusho uh, on there, I'm and tight. it had Cowboy Funk. Oh man, <laughs> that's like, that, that's kind of cool now that I think about it, is to kind of just 
like watch through a block of television. Yeah, it's almost like a time capsule with, the, with all the commercials. I wonder if I still have that tape. I know uh, I have a tape somewhere with a bunch. Of, probably kids WB stuff somewhere. Mm-hmm. I stopped taping things when I could just when I could be there. I would just stay up or get up, yeah. Even if I wasn't supposed to on the former, uh, but I was only taping stuff when like I, I know I wouldn't be there. Yes, excuse me, but um, um, what's that? that that episode is so funny. It's and it you know it's like even like the new character introduced is so funny. The situations are hilarious, and of course. Uh, you know, anytime I get to hear Darren Norris in an anime, I, is a I trick. mean, I mean, not Darren Norris, whatever fake name he went by oh, in yeah, the credits of the, the yeah, no, he's got the bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah, I think it's because by then, Fairly Odd Parents is on TV. I was familiar with that. Oh yeah, and I think we all watched the first few seasons of Fairly yeah, Odd Parents. Yeah. You know, it was a decent show at the time. Uh, well, all all the like the like the veterans of the yeah. anime are like. All in this show somewhere, yeah. like mixed in some episode or something. And then, well, I think with Darren Norris, and then like, like you know, a couple years later, Team America came out. And he's huge <laughs> in that, so like it only makes Cowboy Andy a much better character. Uh, um, oh, it's just only it, it's funny, and then it has a, a an amazing fight sequence. Yeah, it does. And just, that might be my favorite fight scene in all of. Bebop oh, it's, general, it's directed that. really well and has great angles, yeah. and they and it's funny, and they use clips of it in the commercials. And oh man, Adult Swim also knew how to, yeah, market that show. They had good MVers, yes, in there, and they're, they're still working today. That's true. Um, I really, I really dig that episode. It's, I would say it's the funniest episode. I'm sad that it's not I, out I, here. I, I Mushroom Samba is great. It really is. I think I like. Cowboy Funk more though. We'll, we'll get to Mushroom Samba. That's, that's, Cowboy that's, Funk, that's is Cowboy Funk the last episode for Real Funk Blues? No, 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 no. no, no that's hard, right. Hard, hard, hard Luck Woman is uh, yeah, or Hard Luck Girl. I think it's the second. It's I think it's it's one of the last right. ones. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's, you really get your chuckles out of the yeah. way before. Yeah, it's just like laugh now before we make you cry. Uh, Toys in the Attic. I don't know. Oh yeah, we're talking about. Toys I in actually the Attic. don't. I don't know. Yeah, for some reason, like it's just like it. It's it's cool in that it's like. It feels like, like I was saying before. Here's here's this genre episode. Here's a horror movie as a Cowboy Bebop episode, mm-hmm. like an actual because like Pierre LeFou is like creepy and scary. That one feels more like a Batman episode. That one's after this, but yeah, but but uh, Wait, yeah, but fucking uh, but fucking good. Uh, yeah, toys in the attic. <laughs> to, toys Toys in the attic. Uh, yeah, it's like a horror movie as an episode of Bebop. Well, Toys in Toys in the attic is also a really good episode because it. Uh, well, it. Only stars the the main cast. Yeah, um, that's why they did uh, the like all the the live readings of the uh, scripts. They did that episode. Um, oh, at like cons. Why yeah, they're they doing at cons. They did for anime fans get back. Oh. Um, which I was on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a great episode because you get a sense of all the characters. Yeah, because they only interact with each other. So it's a like. It, honestly, it's a really good episode to introduce someone to the series, even though tonally it's very different because it's kind of horror. But by the end, you know each and one of these. Yeah, you know, what? yeah, I do know agree. These characters. I do agree because yeah. it does focus on just those four. Mm-hmm. I think that, that that it is a good one in terms of just like, hey, here's what Cabo Bebop's about. It's these four guys mm-hmm. being idiots and being hilarious and well, endearing. Right. It is, but ah, oh, their 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 interactions with each other are all yeah. great, and it just really defines. Was was this the one that you suggested? I, I think I did not not because it's like necessarily my favorite or one of my favorites, but it's an iconic episode. Yeah, like people always remember this one, mm-hmm. and I do too. Um, Speaking of iconic, uh, I think the first one that I watched uh, in this recent, I'm going to go back and watch a bunch of episodes before we do the skirt blog, uh, was number three, which was Pierre LeFou. Mm-hmm. Um, this one I think has probably the most like. Just because of how insane he is, the most memorable like like single episode character. Because I love I love Andy. Spike Andy. I I, I, yeah, I yeah I love I love Andy. I love VT. Um, you know, even some like the little one off bad guys and stuff are fun. But like, fucking Tong Poo is fucking terrifying. <laughs> uh, and it's funny because like I, I keep thinking in the back of my head like I want to compare something to Batman, but like I know Big O is the show that kind of gets more of that reputation, but. This one feels almost like, like Spike and the others walked into an episode of Batman, like specifically, and not even just like, not even, not even necessarily just the Penguin, but just like the the more kind of like, like Pierre LeFou felt like he could have been a Batman villain, 
mm-hmm. like just mixed in there. Uh, he was kind of he was sad also, and mm-hmm. how he goes was both hilarious oh, and and, and sad as ever. Yeah. <laughs> Squish yeah. by by Goofy by a giant yeah, Goofy right. lookalike that right. gets shot. The giant walking <laughs> robots from the amusement park. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's another good episode. Like I, I another another creepy episode. The one uh, one I always found creepy was the one with the cult with the, uh, the yeah. old man. Oh, Bryce Scratch. Yeah, it was because that's the one I would always when I would doze off, watch Adult Swim, and I'd wake back up like late into the night. That episode would always be on, and it'd always be right at the freaking ending. Yeah, <laughs> it's a I, really creepy. I, that one's cool. To, did not get a lot of votes when I was. Well, no, I wouldn't say there, it's. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's one of the best episodes, but it's one of those ones where. It, feels wrong to watch it in the daytime yeah gotta watch it like at one two in the morning like I, you can't go to kakariko village in, in zelda and during the day it just does it's not right you're just, really I, you're just you're cheating you have to be at night and it has to be scary and the redeads have to sh- have to shriek at you yeah <laughs> you have to watch it's like any scary i don't know Which why i made zelda that game comparison are we talking about? i don't know why i don't know why i'm, I'm thinking of that. ocarina of time i so am just like i am that's what I was talking about. Whatever, that was a bad example. It's like, I, sorry, it's like you need to watch a horror movie at night, or you're just yeah being a wimpo if you're not. So you're like me, but nonetheless. Um, but uh, yeah, Brain Scratch is good. I remember, I remember, yeah, hearing and like, oh, it's Lord Zed. It's a cool, <laughs> I mean, it's a cool twist. I like it, and yeah. it's also it's it reminds me of like kind of one of the twists in Melgar Solid too. It's, yeah, it's the ones that make you. It's like think <laughs> Im- implanting so, like mm-hmm. consciousnesses into mm-hmm. other people. Yeah, actually, it's funny. It's almost kind of like a fucked up like like dot hack battle network like cyberpunk type thing of like that kind of stuff gone totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know if Sword Art or the like have tackled that in you know recent years. <laughs> who the fuck? Who the fuck knows? Where is that? Sorry, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna piss someone off. Uh, yeah, whatever. never seen no. it. Next, by the way. Um, yeah, Pierre LeFou. Also, Pierre LeFou has, uh, you, you know, well, I was going to say it has very striking visuals, like with like the set designs and like, mm-hmm. like LeFou's, LeFou's, Tom <laughs> LeFou, hey guys, Don, it's me. I'm in a Cowboy View office. Uh, Tom Poo's design is like very, like almost out of place, like creepily so. Intentionally. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you remember anything about this one? When it was there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you were seeing it. Specifically. Oh, uh, no, I mean, pretty much that. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the funny thing about some of these two, I find, is that, and it's like the complete opposite of like what, what you'd think about um, Toys in the Attic, is that sometimes it's almost like this episode is like something out of a show about this episodic character, and Spike and the others just happen to like come crashing in on it, and they happen to be the ones that change things. Or whatever, like, like not just Tom Poo, but like a lot of the other, like, like they're only in this episode characters. Like, it's almost about them, but then like Spike and the others come in, and they're just like, "Hey, we're guests on your show for a second. You know, this is really our show." And then uh, the, the creators and the or the creator and the directors, I think, like they're not ashamed of like wearing their influences on their sleeve. Mm-hmm. Dread, which is, I think, one thing that sort of like rubbed off on me too from mm-hmm. the show. Like, they. they they, this probably definitely was inspired by like Batman and stuff like that. Yeah. So like, so yeah, he is pretty much like a Batman character floating around, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. somehow floating around with his little fat dress. Um, yeah, because even like that episode, it's like, if you really get down to it, it's about him. It's about Tom Poo as a serial killer, and then learning more about his backstory. Like, and it's just, it's almost like, like the the, the crew, the Bebop crew, or like the audience, like finding out more about him. And the spike just happens to be around when he dies because just some bad shit happens, and it's like, oh no, that was a sad beginning, middle, and end for this guy. <laughs> what, was he afraid of cats? Is that what it was? Uh, cats was like yeah. cats were his trigger. They yeah. made him like like see red. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> like uh, the, the, yeah, the, what is it? I think it was like a scarecrow robot or something that was going like, hello. Hello. Oh yeah, yeah, and then there's the little fairy thing that's like it's dangerous in here. It's like shut yeah. up. This girl reminds me of like this. Exactly. Line. Line. Hello, Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> I want to suck your blood. I just love the like go- goofy knockoff with the Donald outfit that just like 
It's like, oh, you predicted Five Nights at Freddy's a billion years later, where they just, like, shoot his head off, and it's, like, gears underneath, like, oh, hello, hello, and I'm like, I don't want to sleep anymore. Um, what else you got? Number two, uh, this I'm actually surprised is not number one, uh, and again, first episode I saw was Mushroom Samba. Um, it's a very different episode. I, it it and, doesn't define the series. And, and yet, I think it might be my favorite episode. So, at first, um, I didn't want to rewatch it right away because I was hearing from people that it was almost kind of like the stereotypical, like, oh, everybody's seen that episode, everybody always talks about that episode, it's like, no, there's more to it than that. Yeah. That was always kind of the impression I got, but then, so then I watched a few, and then I watched Mushroom Samba, and, like, even though I, I went in with that kind of like, eh, whatever mentality, I was like, oh, this is, this episode is fucking great. It's really like, funny. It's so funny. Like, because, okay, when it, when an anime in general can make me laugh, it's like, it's a very rare trick, because I love anime, but like, yeah. because there, it, there's such a different sense of humor, like, culturally, yeah. uh, when that happens, it's it's nice, like, oh, cool, that works, you know, that was, I think, universally funny. Just Ed, literally, I mean, there, there's so many good gags like, all around, but consistently just Ed running around being special, like, every shot, I'm just like, what? I just run around with iron chasing. I'm just like every time it makes me laugh. Well, Bebop's it's usually cool. a little more subtle in its humor. Yeah, uh, this uh, Mushroom Samba is the black exploitation episode. <laughs> of Bebop it's it's slaps like stu- slapstick all throughout. Yeah. yeah, it's so silly. Like the it's guy weird. dragging around the coffin because and then it gets run over. <laughs> He's and like, and I carry this coffin. Just like, put your body. Truck runs over. Um. Like consistently through watching, I was like, because it had been years. It been, I think it had been since I watched it in college. I, I hadn't seen it. It was just making me laugh all over again. Cause I never Fucking remember. cow. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. one part just, like talks to the cow. The yeah. subtitles. <laughs> oh, which which I feel like Anchorman completely ripped off of. Really? Years later, yeah. When uh, when his dog uh, talks to the bear. I, I'm not saying they ripped it off, but I'm like, it, it's... Is there subtitles? Yes. Oh, uh, I feel like it's be. the same thing. Not at my um, that was very brief in Mushroom Samba. I love that trope when, like, animals can talk to one another. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they all speak the same. I feel like Chopper is, like, that, that like, like Oda's take on that yeah. joke where, like, he says that they're going to kill you for stealing his eggs. Sorry. <laughs> um... But, yeah, no, I was laughing so fucking much throughout this episode. One of my favorite I, moments in that, and it's so subtle, is when uh, the woman is detained at the police office, and she's being questioned, the one cop gets a yeah. phone call, and it's like his wife his, or Yeah, his friend. chastising wife. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> He's just like, no, honey. It's, like, it's, just, it's, it's subtle, but it's just funny, because the guy's trying to be all serious, and then he's just like, honey, I'm at work. Oh it's, my God. it's really funny. You know, actually, okay, you remind me on, on this note, too, because we talked a little bit about like just the advent of the dub itself. Um, God, this, this, okay, actually, no, I'll, I'll say this. I had the pleasure of, in these last couple weeks since this comes out, of working with uh, Melissa Fawn, who's the voice yeah. of Ed. Uh, and we were talking about Bebop, and I was mentioning this to her, and I'm like, this dub is, sorry to date ourselves, but over 15 years old, it's still so fucking good. Like, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who now actually, by the way, is directing Prelay shows, mm-hmm. um, and she should be, because she's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, one of the best directors in, in for, for dubs in anime history, hands fucking down, That's no awesome contest. Job. I'm, no, I'm just, look, I'm just saying, know, she, she doesn't even do that in anime anymore, but as far as, as I think, I actually don't, I think she's directing Naruto anymore, uh, which she was for like I'm ever. still doing it. <laughs> I mean, well, Naruto uh, will never end. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean like, you know, and, and I could tell again by, by the time that like how many shows were out by that point for those years, um, it's like all of the best people in the anime world were all in the show in some episode in some capacity somewhere. And, like, the writing, too, like, the adaptation was really solid. It, it was that nice kind of, almost that Yu Yu Hakusho sweet spot of, like, not too direct translation-y, mm-hmm. had fun with itself, felt very natural, and, like, the, performance was, the performances well, were all especially natural. especially in this show. I think Yu Yu show. there's a lot of lines where, it, and, I, and I let it slide because I enjoy it, but some stuff I'm like, oh, that really takes me out of it. Yeah. But Bebop, you don't get the sense. Of- well, it wasn't, it wasn't as, like, sarcastic in its humor. Like, Yu Yu Hakusho had a lot of, like, like sarcastic jokes, but... Bebop, it was more just kind of like, it felt very real. It didn't, it, ne- it never felt like a dub. 
It just felt like this is the show. It felt like this is... I'm watching the actual version yeah. of the show. Well, to this day, Bebop is still heralded as one of, if not the best English stuff that's ever been produced. And I I usually... That's my go-to. If someone asks me what's the best English stuff... Not my personal favorite, but what's the best English stuff ever. I said, like, hands down. It's yeah. Bebop. Well, and even because, like, I, I was joking about people who dislike or don't care about anime like this show. Anime fans who don't like dubs... Like the dub of this show, yeah. Which I think is, a, I think yeah. I, I think it I feels only natural. I think <laughs> that I only ever in my entire life interacted with one person. And I never forgot this too. It was even before I think I saw much of the show. I think I might have only seen the mushroom episode, but I remember interacting with somebody one time. It was like, nah, I like if I'm gonna watch anime, I'm gonna watch in Japanese, even bebop. I'm sure dub is fine or whatever, but I'm yeah, the you, only person ever you come across those. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between that and like straight up dub haters yeah you know it's like that's annoying well because also like and because this is the reason i wanted i wanted to to talk about mary elizabeth because like a friend of mine was talking about how like there there isn't always like the time or room for like dubs made with like with passion you Mm -hmm. know like i think about people who like were really big fans of the show that they got into and I know, like, at panels, like, Mary Elizabeth has talked about how, like, she marathoned the whole show and was, like, big into it and, like, really wanted to, like, treat it I right. I don't think you get that so much anymore because I it's think... time. I think, yeah, <laughs> it's the, like, the industry moves too fast. Yeah. And now it's, like, with most shows being dubbed and coming out roughly around the same time as the Japanese version. Yeah. So I remember not to say that there isn't care put into yeah. it. Certainly. No, no. I think it's, like... You, you're not going to get something like Justin Cook watching through an entire series. Yeah, 120 something going through and dubbing it from yeah. episode one. You don't necessarily get that anymore. Yeah. It's just, it will, Bebop's just so natural. And it's not even just like, it's just all the, like, the voices of like the main cast just fit to a T. There were even, I could tell, and, and actually this is something I almost never see happen anymore too, also because of just lack of time. Like, for instance, I think that that episode, I mean, I might be totally wrong about this, but the Mushroom Samba, I think, like, some of the actors in that episode, I don't think I'd ever heard them in anything else before. They might have been like, we gotta get, we, we want to get a African-American actress to yeah. play this character. <laughs> I, was I don't know. Like, I, probably because they're, you know, they're like, this sounds shitty, but I think, you know, it's like, it's obvious, like, it's because there's African-American characters in that, and most anime it doesn't have black characters well, yeah, you know? yeah. or they well, or unfortunately they won't cast black actors yeah well i mean not not that I, oh paul st peter is mm-hmm. is punch who is hilarious oh, which I is also true because that. uh bo billingsley is, is yeah Jeff. that's yeah that's true yeah. that's true um but uh but yeah i mean like stuff like that was okay or like even uh, in the movie um uh what the fuck is his name uh uh, oh, the nerdy guy. No, no, no. No, um, no not, not, I mean, well, that, that was funny because they made him British, but, yeah. uh, no, the, the, oh, God, the, the bean guy, Rashid. Uh, Rashid was like somebody who I don't think did anime otherwise, mm-hmm. but they were just like, we need somebody who can do this accent and speak this, speak this language, et cetera, and do this whole scene. It felt totally legit the whole time. Yeah. Like, when you need something that specifically, even in a case like that, it's like, oh, that's cool. Like, we don't, I really, again, gotta, I really gotta watch the movie again. I, I haven't seen it in so long, and I bought it. I bought it on Blu-ray. Uh, the first time I saw it, though, I was kind of underwhelmed. I gotta be honest. Yeah, I also dozed off a little bit. I think my friend, his dad, gave me shit for it. I was like, "Come on, we watched it late. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna fall asleep." <laughs> um, but uh, I do want to get to the movie before that. I, I I think the the movie's good. I just don't think it hits all the strong points that the series Bebop does. Uh, it, it, it's still a fun movie, but I think it kind of it gets a little too serious. We, we, weirdly, though, Samba, despite the fact that it's the opposite of that and that mm-hmm. it's like it's it's mostly comedy, I, that's an episode I would be like, "Here's Bebop." <laughs> it's like with, I would show that with, to people with, with with the Bebop movie. I I should watch it again because I only really besides the ending, I only really remember like three scenes, uh, and that's the beginning. Uh, you know, the opening act in the convenience store, mm. uh, the fight with the broom, and the fight on the train. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, I think people would argue with me that those are the best parts of the movie. Um, there's Well, there's more. I want to go into that. Uh, otherwise, Mushroom Samba, any memories, comments, anything? No, I think we covered it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, we're like doing so much of the talk. It's funny. Black exploitation. Uh, yeah. It's... Um, I love it. Ed, Ed is the best ever. 
Uh, fucking... The, okay, so number one... Actually, speaking of the serious side, so another one. Uh, number one... Uh, and I was kind of expecting when I did the poll that Mushroom Sound was going to overtake it, but number one voted was Battle of the Fallen Angels. Really? Yeah. Like, most consistently from everybody, that was the one. That, that was the one I was best. originally going to suggest. That's funny. Only because, like, people hadn't mentioned it yet. Oh, my God, we should talk about this. Yeah. And I, and I said it earlier in the show, I'm like, oh, like, the Spike backstory is actually the least interesting part. But they're well, still but good okay. episodes. But, well, and, and also, though, like, because it has the others in it. You know, like, Faye got to do, like, the... Yeah. Like, the dress up stuff which was fun and uh did ed do anything in that one ed's not even oh, yeah, far yeah, around yeah. yet jesus ed actually joins in pretty late yeah it's so weird i just um, associated her like since the beginning uh the animation is really good the directing the the music the music choices and the, the way some of the scenes play out to the music is yeah, it's, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, Watson obviously so good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I was saying about like the kind of like mini music videos within an episode. Mm-hmm. With, like, I mean, like you know, Spike falling through the the yeah. window with the glass going everywhere, and like that kind of pretty almost Ave Maria type stuff going on. And then mm-hmm. like that vicious fight is good. Vicious doesn't overstay his welcome. I don't, I don't like dislike him, um, no. despite him being the most. He's a cool looking thing. villain, and he's the leader of like a you know, a and he has, he has yeah. silver hair. Like, all good anime characters should. And he's got a crazy bird. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always forget about the bird. Does he have a bird? Yeah, he had a yeah. bird. Yeah, a bird. And it's like an actual bird. Why do I know that, that bird? I Oh, is it a crow? It's not... I don't a think it's a crow, something? but it's an... Ex- it's like... At first I thought it was a futuristic sci-fi bird. It's an actual bird. <laughs> oh. I... I think I saw this on Twitter. I'm gonna... Hold ago. on, I'm gonna look that up. Um... <laughs> That would be about Vicious think, Bird. <laughs> see, I, I didn't play Final Fantasy VII, so I think Vicious was my Sephiroth. Introduction to silver yeah. badass people. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. And, I mean, he's a good one. And the dub, you probably know his actor's name. Uh, Skip Stalrett. Who is also Master Guy Gun. Sensei! Lee! My guy! Which is also crazy because he sounds so much like Damien Clark's uh, to girl voice. And he's also played in Japanese by Nori Wakamoto, who did Cell with Damien Clark voice. And it's funny, because in Kingdom Hearts 2, they were trying to find the English equivalent of Nori Wakamoto, and they accidentally got... Continue, I'm going to look up the bird real yeah, quick. That was interesting. Mike, what do you remember about Bell's Falling Angels, man? Uh, well, the strength of that one is definitely the ending. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that fight scene, and then the, the falling out the windows, but the iconic. And, you know, I almost feel like it was good that Faye was there, because... And not just because her tits were shaking around everywhere... But because uh, she made that not super dire, because her like kind of like ah, type reactions and everything was okay, but still kind of keeping it semi lighthearted. Mm-hmm. That is a fucking futuristic bird. Jesus Christ, that's a real bird. It's a real bird. Oh my god, look at this fuck. I got I had a picture of vicious. On it probably bird. it might say it on that Does Wikipedia it? entry. We'll find out. Um, I swear, uh, I, there's a line I like in that when uh, he meets with the the lady from his past. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. Anastasia. Don't you call me that. <laughs> I like her a lot. And she, and she did come back. Oh, and she, no. di- and then Don't she you died. Call me that. Don't you call me that. <laughs> she died. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, sure I forgot she died. I was upset. I was. I know Spike dies. Fucking Julia whatever. was here. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh my good lord. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't even... Sorry, actually you reminded me. Uh, uh, none of the other like runner up uh, runner up ones that got like I'll mention. Uh, yeah, like um, speak like a child, which I really enjoy that one a lot. I'm surprised uh, someone mentioned that. Yeah, yeah that that one got like a couple votes, but I I really like that one a lot. Mm. Uh, I thought the the like the the Faye VHS like the stuff on it was like mm. a really powerful like emotional point used with her. Um, I gotta admit that was one of, like. At the time, the only Cowboy Bebop DVD I owned had that episode in it. I think I got that set. And I think my brother suggested I got that set because it had that episode. Oh, He hadn't seen it yet. Oh, okay. So I really wanted to see it. Despite it only being like a few minutes of footage. But, uh, well, that also wound up having Mushroom Samba on it. So, (laughs) and Black Dog Serenade. And I forget what the the other episode. Oh, oh, it was the one with, uh. It was also the one with Faye's backstory. So it was a it was a very Faye heavy yeah. set. I no, I, I really liked it a lot, and like and 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 also like Jet and Spike having a little like pilgrimage adventure trying to find a fucking VHS player. It's really or no, a, a Beta Max player that is. No, they, they go looking for well, they don't know what either are, but they go looking for one. They come back with the Beta Max. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or no, they come with a VHS player. And Ed's like, that's not the right one, dumb dumb. Beta Max player. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no. I. 
I think one of the coolest things about uh, things set in the future is when things from, you know, it's like the present, you know, in our present are deemed, you know, like artifacts and yeah, yeah. and ancient. So I, re- I really find it cool when people in the future are interacting with it or they're going into the bowels of an underground, of a, of a <laughs> shopping mall that's underground yeah. to get a VHS player. It's I, really cool. Really, um, I forget his name, like the Native American character. Uh, Spike meets with it occasionally. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't remember. His I name, think I think I it's like sl- sleeping something. <laughs> Try to carry on. Something stereotype. Yes. Anyway, uh, he's got a PS One in his tent. He does. Oh, yeah. Wait, he does. That's why, right, because I saw that. Okay, sorry. So we saw your name in theaters. Now go fucking see it, please, Jesus Christ. Uh, Depending we, on when you listen. Hopefully, it's going <laughs> out. But there's there's a part where. Steve noticed in it, and somebody on Twitter actually like screen capped it too. There's a there's a orange spice colored GameCube mm. and a PS One in this character's room with a copy of Metal yeah. Solid One. And I Solid saw one. I saw the movie earlier today, and and that character's in it, the 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 Native American chief. And uh, and yeah, I saw the PlayStation One. All I can think of was like, is he friends with the Your Name character? Mm. Do they just both have PS Ones? Um, because I think. Uh, maybe it was an inside joke because they made a PS1 Bebop game. Oh yeah, it was really yeah. shitty, right? Is it uh, like the flying game? Yeah, I heard it was, it was it was okay, just really really hard, and there's only like four levels. But that's the flying one, right? Yeah, but yeah it's yeah. like it's Star Fox 64 style. And they were trying to really, only. they were trying really hard to develop a PS2 game. I remember. Hmm. I remember. I think that they even did like. I think it was implied that they dubbed it. Like they got like that far into production yeah. with it, and then it like never happened. Yeah. Um. Oh, I wasn't sleeping something. I can't find his name. But yes, that character. I remember him. He was cool. Um, uh, fuck. Let me get like this thing. Uh, yeah, Spirit Land Child, I really liked. Cowboy Funk, we talked about. Andy's the best. Uh, Heavy Metal Queen, I like VT a lot. That is another one I think that, yeah, is a really good introduction. As you were saying, mm-hmm. that, that was your first episode. It was, it was. Yeah, it was It was my first episode, but like, it's not It's not one of my favorites, but it it kind of introduces you to the worlds. I like I like VT Bergeron a lot. Melody Spivak's character. <laughs> she's, oh, she's cool. I like the the guy with the Yule tattoo. Yeah. Oh, that poor guy. I got a thing for you. <laughs> it's, it's just embarrassing. But, oh yeah, and the fucking like the 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 target of that episode was like some skinny loser mm-hmm. guys. Like, oh no, this he, girl's gonna get me. Pretty much. Uh, oh God, what's his name? He looks just like uh, the actor from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. He looks like Rick With, like, a vest and, yeah. and tattoos that you would never have. Um, oh, another good one. I've uh, been kind of implying it a little bit. Uh, Hard Luck Woman, as last episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, really like that one a lot, too. Uh, I love how, like, truly idiotic Ed's dad was. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it was perfectly fitting as to what he's doing. And the fact that Ed leaves but does not go with her dad made so yeah. much sense to me. I'm just like, no, because she wouldn't. Yeah. Why? Well, Why would her you? her dad's pretty much a child himself. Yeah. You know? Kind of, you could see why you know she's not with him. Yeah. Nor does she. Well, I think it's like it's not even like a like in, in spite of. You know, I think you know they kind of reunite, and it's you know they're like oh yeah yeah, but then like their their lives don't. Revolve around the other. Yeah, yeah. Kinda... They're just like doing what he probably just yeah. like. I didn't mean to have a kid. Whoops! Yeah. I fucked they're both, up. Yeah, they're both they're yeah. they're both kids. Yeah. And she just is because I I think I think Ed is. I don't know if I'm, in a, I'm probably in a very small minority here. Ed's my I think my favorite character of the main four. Mm, like, sure. I don't know. She's just like I think because I like that she is that kind of like pure force of good that the crew needs to like. Mm-hmm. Not be utterly miserable all the time, and I too, obviously. But. And I, I, I do like them all. Yeah, um, they're all they're all great. Yeah, I mean, it'd, it'd be kind of rough if there's a main cast of four and there's someone you didn't like. Yeah, uh, like I, I've always liked Spike. I think it's more of like a kind of like a like when there's the, the male power fantasy. Yeah, whatever. I wish I was that good at kickboxing. There's the male poochie fantasy. I guess. <laughs> oh, I, Spike's not a poochie. He's got a lot of depth. Uh, and he gets humbled a lot, so he he. Electra is poochie. Yeah, poochie. <laughs> I guess I don't remember too much of her, but because Vin, Vincent's more interesting than she is, I hate to say Vincent's that. Vincent's more interesting to me just because he's played by Darren, Darren Norris. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Darren Norris. Uh, actually, you know, on this note too, do you guys have like a favorite of the main four, or like of, of any character on the show? I would say Jet. 
Yeah. I've become more partial to Jet. Jet's, years, Jet's fun. Because he's... Well, they've all been through a lot, you know? But he's definitely... He's the most grounded, I think. Yeah. I think he's definitely the most relatable character. Yeah. I like the episode with his, uh, his ex-girlfriend. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. It's kind of like a really heavy ending moment. Yeah. Yeah. He's he I I love that he's like kind of the hapless dad figure mm. to everybody. Even That's though why his girlfriend left him. Yeah, no, and, and even though he's like I, I forgot about this too that he's actually like only in his thirties, mm. but he just he he's okay. comes off much mm. older than he is because he kind of just has to be the mature one. Even even when it's just him and Spike, he's just like practically babysitting Spike all the fucking time anyway. It's like, well, you both you both you both jet guys. Yeah, I mean, well, I, like I said, I like them all, yeah. but I've kind of I've opened up a lot more to Jet. Um, There's no merchandise of Jet. Like, yeah, why is that? Because young, because young hot. people don't like older characters. It's, or, yeah, I guess there's not that much of that either. With, mm-hmm. with with a with a balding hairline. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But now we get older. You know, now we we're all oh, we like those because <laughs> we identify with them more. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, I I do. How long have we been going for now? Uh, we're an hour and ten minutes. Oh shit! Wow, this is longer than I expected it to be. Thank you for staying. Um, oh, you're in mine. I do. <laughs> I do want to. Uh, well, maybe staying to do this more. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the, a little bit about the movie. See, I, I've said so many times about this whole thing of like, oh, this episode is a really good introduction for people who haven't seen it before, and this one really works well or whatever. But because even though I saw Mushroom Samba before that, I really do feel like the movie was like the truest introduction that I had to everything. And watching it again earlier today, I still fucking love it. And I and even though like I, I like I've grown to appreciate the show more like in rewatching it again, I think if I still had to be honest, I think I like the movie the most. And I but now I, I think I realize why specifically. For one thing, the because like I was saying, each episode feels like a little mini movie. The movie is a movie and it feels like just like hey we have more time to let what could have just been an episode breathe because it totally could have been or maybe even a two part or something or it could have just been Vincent by himself not with Electra and the hacker kid Lee or whatever his name was um, but because it had that that time uh, and because it gave all the main characters something to do all of the new characters that were introduced for the most part were at least like interesting like somewhat or whatever like Vincent I actually. Because you were joking before about like, oh yeah, our favorite character, Vincent, like before we were recording this. But I, I, Vincent in some ways is kind of more interesting to me than Vicious was. Like with kind of some of the stuff they were doing with them. It was like, oh, like, you know, he's that same kind of like... Uh, Vicious has a pretty straightforward backstory. That's the thing. Yeah. He's just... He, you know, he was in, you know, the gang with Spike and he just aspired to take over that gang. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's all. Like like Vincent's whole... Like, and he had a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Vincent's whole like creed of like why like why he's doing his plan was also like like kind of impactful and interesting with like the whole like this fucked up soldier who had nothing to live for and, mm-hmm. and, and like him wanting to kind of show humanity what for with this like bioweapon and et cetera and almost this kind of like weird creepy Adam and Eve thing with Faye or whatever, like I don't know, and then like the butterfly thing which I'll I, be the, the new Adam. This, oh, uh, you'll be the new Eve. Ew. Oh man. Um but yeah, and and like again, it, it has like a pretty fair amount, and, and it's all of them in their element. Like they all get to be themselves and do their funny shit, and like the plan at the end, like the big parade and everything. And there's so many fucking good fight scenes in it. The animation's even better than the show was, and the show already had amazing animation to begin with. I don't know. I just remember like when we watched that, like on like that Saturday, like fucking however many years ago, like. With still not sure how I felt about, like, if I wanted to get into Bebop or not. I just remember, like, being totally sucked into that. And I really enjoyed it. I still really like it now on my third overall watch of it. So, you remember anything else about it? It's been a long time since I watched that yeah. movie. I can't, I, I honestly can't pinpoint the last time I watched that movie. I kind of wanted to watch it with you guys this weekend. But we were seeing Power Rangers and then Your Name. And I'm like, alright, I want to blow them out too much with too many movies in a row. I have, so many, I have so many hours in the day. Yeah. But, um, I guess, uh, well, as we've gone longer than I expected, any closing thoughts about Beep Boop? Uh, you know, I got cancelled once. 
Did it? Yeah, in Japan they canceled it for a little while because it was too violent. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah when they was, aired it. Was, was, when they aired it, yeah. I was saying, Mike, is, but, this, is but, this leading to a joke? Because I remember you told sorry, this exact story. No, but I, that, but, uh, no, but like, I think like they knew it was going to get on another channel. Yeah. Like, yeah, like right away. No, that's okay. Um, but it didn't get canceled here. And yeah. that's, that's important. No, it ran for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. It really was. The like, opposite of canceled here. It was, no, seriously, yeah. Because it and Inuyasha were like the most like repeated shows ad nauseum on Adult oh, Swim. Oh, like, God, now I remember time. my first introduction to the series. Oh? It was months in advance before seeing it on TV. The reading about it in Beckett DBZ oh. Collector Magazine. Because they were talking about shows that uh, Cartoon Network was taking interest in trying to get on Toonami, and this was before Adult Swim. Yeah. Cowboy Bebop, they want to put on Toonami. But really? I think even then they were saying, like, I think it's it's too violent and the characters smoke a lot. There's no way this is getting <laughs> on. I And the thing is, though, in the title, Cowboy Bebop, I'm like, what the? It's yeah. like, I, 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 I took it literally. I thought it was about funky cowboys. And, uh, <laughs> funky cops. Well, yeah, I, I, God, you read my freaking mind. Uh, <laughs> And then, anybody, anybody seen that? Anybody at all? Anybody? No. Fucking cops. Leave a comment. No one wants to admit it. <laughs> uh, but I just, yeah, then I remember uh, when I was I'm like, oh, this is the funky bebop funk cowboy funk, funk, bop. funk show. Bebop funk bop. Um, yeah, oh, God. Wow, I can't believe that just hit me. Um, still one of my favorite anime. It's definitely, it, it's like, it's like top five anime. Really? Oh, so, yeah. Wow. Shit. I could always, I could always watch it and always enjoy it. It's, it's sometimes when like you, one of your favorite movies is on TV, and yeah. you'll just leave it on, yeah. No matter how many times you've seen it, that's how Bebop is. How many times have you guys watched it in full? By now? I that I couldn't tell you, yeah. Because like I said, sporadically watching TV, you'd miss some weeks, uh, and like I, I. I was always thinking about getting it on DVD, and then once I found out Funimation acquired the rights, I held off, and they took forever to release their versions, yeah. and then when they did, I didn't watch it all on like a weekend, I slowly watched it over months, but I you know, got Blu-rays, I wanted to make sure I wanted to watch it in the Blu-ray yeah. quality and get the most out of it, so. It's good shit. I think that's, I think when it came out on Blu-ray, I think that was the only time I sat through it, like, for sure, yeah. the first episode all the way to the yeah, end. yeah. No interruptions, no skips. Well, I, I uh, for for it st- like not still being one of my favorite shows ever necessarily. I I'm glad that I finally you know, taken the time to sit down and watch the road. and even even now I think like because again even though nobody asked to like oh where's the curve line about Bebop or whatever I felt like this needs to have one like I just we we need to like just talk and sing the praises of this fucking show because mm-hmm. it should be. I feel like it's just like one of those things that's made like it's made itself into a landmark in like animation history. You think it gets overhyped at all? You know what? I don't, I, I don't think so. I think the only thing that I get sad about is that some people who, you know, okay. Yeah. I'll say this. I don't think it's overhyped, but I do think that people who think that this is like the only good anime or like, it's the only one that they can tolerate watching or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think that's unfair because I see cool elements of this, you know, either in shows that were around the same time or shows that came after that were probably inspired by it, or maybe they weren't, who knows, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, because Bones is still doing amazing shit to this day, they're still one of my favorite animation companies. Um, I feel like it's it's not fair for, like, if somebody who gave this show a shot and then everything else is like, eh, anime, whatever. If anything, I feel like, because I think for a lot of people it is a gateway anime. Like into yes. uh, to oh, try yeah. other stuff. Yeah, it's a gateway. Um, it's a different kind of because, like, typically when I think of a gateway show for anime, I think like you know Pokemon, Dragon Ball. Like, no, those kind of, no, no. Well, no. because in terms of like you, that's that's the first anime that's how we got you happen anime, to see. Yeah. But then like you inspect more of what there is out there, and then you learn about oh, there's other shows that aren't made for kids that I can get into that you know appeal to me. Um, Bebop is different in that it's just like it's kind of all. I mean, I guess it, it's not necessarily like. Kids safe, but it's it's generally pretty approachable. Can't let out those cigarettes. Yeah, can't make that. I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give your because I'm drawing us as a character just because I'm gonna be Ed and you're gonna be Jet. Oh, of course, of course. And you're gonna be Spike. <laughs> I think I'm gonna give you a lollipop just because oh, <laughs> you would never smoke. Um, I'm give him a gun. That's oh, funny. I can tell my T-shirt story now. Oh yes, please, please. Um, I I forget if I ever mentioned this on your blog, but. Back before, you know, when the internet was starting to really blow up. I didn't know where you got 
anime merchandise. At the time, I thought Media Point was the only place I could go to buy manga. Yeah. Uh, Epcot in Disney World, Japan. Oh, I remember this. When they come, you, you have not told this on the show when before. When they when they turned when they turned over and started selling anime merchandise in the Japan area. Of Holy Epcot. shit! Like it used to be like a few VHSs, some Pokemon toys. And Gundam models, and then once like Adult Swim and Toonami were really hitting it big, when I went there in like spring of two thousand two, really they had you Hakusho shirts, God damn, and Bebop shirts, uh, and I was like, holy shit, I've never seen the, these the, ever. The one, the one fucking anime thing I ever found uh, in Epcot when I like probably the last time I went was there was like a deck of cards. It was like playing cards with the. Um, it was yeah, it was the the Janemba movie poster, and when, that was back when I didn't know what the fuck that even meant. I had the holographic ones with Goku and all the. Oh my god, I lost those cards too, and I love those cards. Um, and they had Bebop shirts there, and one of them, uh, one of them I couldn't wear because Spike just with a gun and a cigarette, and I'm like, I probably can't wear this to school. Yeah. I think I did wear it to school once when I was in high school, and everybody got on no me for it. Me shit. Really. I think I might have. I think I might have accidentally wore it on school picture day. Oh, because accidentally. Because back then, <laughs> if you're just like an ugly, unpopular kid, it's not like you prep for. And they're yeah. like, oh shit, it's picture day. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of them was a red T-shirt with the, um, the image. You know, like at the end of the the opening sequence when it's the four pictures of them, it was a circular kind of with like all the character art and it said Capo Bebop, and I wore that to school. I was in the seventh grade, and my Seventh grade math teacher was a really cool guy, and <laughs> I walk into that shirt. He's like, "Where did you get that shirt?" Because <laughs> like, he, he knew what it was. And, and I, my sarcastic answer and it was truth. My answer was Disney World, and it's just like the look of the puddle. <laughs> with people. But I found it really cool that my and I really like my seventh grade teacher. He was a big, he was a big Star Wars guy, so yeah. like we got along. Was Hot Topic even a thing at that point? Hot Topic. Hot Topic back then was still like you were scared to go in there because yeah. it was like oh gothic Ooh. oh yeah it wasn't like pop and then like and then like, like Hot Topic stuff. became the place we'd go to be like here's a ducktail shirt <laughs> so, <laughs> oh it changes yeah. Um, but yeah at the time well, back then like when you know when we had like the Z store and that's I don't the know, Z store I don't know where you got anime uh, merchandise it was cool to go there and get Cowboy Bebop t-shirts yeah. because it's not like. No one else knew where to get those, and so, and ironic enough in Disney World to get a Cowboy yeah. Bebop shirt. You have, you have a lot of Bebop shit collected, don't you? Have like figures? Uh, yeah, I've got like the Swordfish figure and uh, just, like old Spike and Faye that came with it. Hmm. And uh, they made like the uh, the, the big posable Spike and Vicious figure a few mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. Kind of regret not buying them. Yeah. Because now they're expensive online. Yeah. Well, they're not expensive already. Yeah. They're like 80 bucks. No, they were like 60. Oh, that's oh, not... That's, yeah. oh. for, for, they're like actually... Yeah, pretty, pretty tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like yeah. at the time, I didn't have that money, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah Bebop deserves nice figures. Yeah. Well, I mean... Well, like I, I said, Japan doesn't give a shit about it. Yeah, it's so weird. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I, I really do kind of wonder, like, what, like, the Japanese audience's, like, perception of Bebop is in general, like... Like, I don't know, because... Because I know, like, like Koichi Yamadera and Sho Ishizuka, who are Jet and, or, uh, Spike and Jet, respectively, like, they're, like, big, big deal seiyu, and, like, that was, I, I don't know if that was, like, one of their early stuff or whatever, and it's decently old by this point, but I don't know, I do kind of wonder about, like, it's weird. what uh, the consensus is on it over here. Well, over I, I think because there was a lot of, like I say, there was a lot of crossover appeal with, like, the big anime boom in the early 2000s, you got to think of some of the stuff that was in that. Bebop, Trigun, Big O, yeah, all had so much Western influence in yeah. it that, of course, it appealed to us. Yeah, how was that Outlaw gateways. Star? Would you kind of rope that in with it too? Maybe Outlaw Star, mm, not necessarily. No. I think. Well, it's very sci-fi, but it's got a similar feel. But uh, like, I, it's like, very. How do you describe it? Like more typical. It's, it's, yeah, it's, I was it's gonna more, say it's it's like a fan ficky kind oh, of okay. and not to knock out Lost Star. I enjoyed that series, it's, but it's got it cat really girls and oh yeah, and that, yeah, yeah, it's, I forget. Yeah, it's got oh, yeah, it has aliens. Like, That's the yeah. big difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's no aliens in Bebop. Yeah, I'll watch that one eventually. There's still so many. What's well, coming out on Blu-ray? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was I was thinking like, oh, should I pick it up? It's another series that got acquired years and years ago. Bebop is, is reminding me. I feel like it's because I'll. I'm sure I'll have you on for future ones. Like, because I want to. I want to keep doing anime anime for longer year, and I'm, I'm always reminded like, oh yeah, God, I haven't seen that show or Anna I June or like Anna J- Junime. 
Um, there's still so many shows that, like I haven't watched before, like that, uh, or like that I that I have watched that I haven't like done a topic about or whatever. There's so much to say about so many of them, and they're all so good. And, like, mm -hmm. but yeah, boop bop. Who knows what those series are? My God, Only like like uh, Garzy's Wing. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know anything about that show. What? That's <laughs> Garcy's Wing. It's everybody's favorite anime I ever made. Um, I think that's gonna wrap us up. So thanks for joining Mental Gen. Of course. Um, Twitters, Tumblers, anything you want to plug? So uh, you just link to it. In the yeah, you know. Mike Lucas, mm -hmm. Steve Yurko. I uh, yeah, I'm pretty easy to find. Everything. Add yeah. everything. Yeah, everything's else. pretty much my name. Yeah. I never. Really I'll just literally name, copy so. and paste the same. I'll just copy and paste the description from the Yu Yu Hakusho yeah. one. Amazing. I won't even. I won't even change yeah. like talking about Yu Yu Hakusho. It'll just be from a year ago. God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, thanks for joining. Uh, everybody in the comments below, leave your favorite moments, fights, episodes, characters, things about Beat Bop Koo Boy. Vowel boo bop in in the let us not, not be boo boo beep bop blue bop beep funky in, in the <laughs> funky cops and leave your favorite episode of funky cops in the your comments favorite funky cops <laughs> moments I want to know I want to know your favorite funky French cops moments abomination make sure to tweet curve your favorite sword art episodes I, uh -huh. just, just die um, and funky cop episodes we're gonna do that for for. French July. Thank you. Just good. I do I that and Winks. I don't even care if Winks isn't French. Winks is Italian. Totally Shut up. Right. Totally totally okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Watch. I, will, I will watch that. <laughs> you will? Yes, to talk about it. And I will. Shit all Co over. Totally okay. You'll watch it? Till, just, just shit all over. Wow. Okay. Well, you heard I'm it. I'm probably going to say this again. One of my uh, funniest moments with Code Lyoko was when my best friend at the time, we just started referring to the, the gym teacher as McGurk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. If, you heard it here, folks. First, we're gonna watch Code Lyoko and do a curb blog about it and shit all over you it. You don't have a Patreon, do you? Uh, no, so sure. Don't. Like, give us money to talk about Code yeah. Lyoko. Donate, <laughs> donate to use your hard-earned money to my, whatever Mike's about. email address is at PayPal.com and whatever. It's buy. <laughs> you just have to cover whatever legal means to get. Code Lyoko episodes I think and that, some alcohol. I, I think the next one will, by the way, will probably be One Punch Man with Ben Diskin. I think we're doing that this mm -hmm. week at some point. So look forward to that. Benjamin Diskin. Benjamin Diskin. What are means old Ben? <laughs> ben. Look forward to ben how ben I talk Diskin. about how I don't like that show very much. Bye, everybody. <laughs> that's how, that's that's not, that's look forward to. That's it. not how you end a discussion about Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> look forward to how much I love Cowboy Bebop and said it for an hour. Cool. I should. I, I know it since you don't know. I know how, the appropriate way to end discussion. Oh, sorry. Cowboy Bebop. Bang. Da -na 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 -na. No. <laughs>